Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Good day. I'm gonna try it. I'm sorry, Australia. Good day. Uh, Pretty good. Not really. I'm sorry. I'm not good at that. I'm gonna. I don't know what it is, but um. Hey, welcome to the show. The Natasha and. Debbie show. We're not usually this tacky. It's because we're nervous. <laughs> Why are we nervous? We're nervous because we love what we have seen of Australia so far, but we realized we probably jumped the gun and went a little bit too specific on things, so we want to dial it back a little bit. I'm really efficient, backwards. <laughs> and, and take a more general look at Australia yeah. so that we can have a better idea of our country. Exactly. And that's what we're going to hear in just a moment. But then we realized something, too. You probably don't know much about us. Now, if you want, um, we do have a video on our channel here. It's called About Us. Mm -hmm. You can always take a look at. Um, but just to give you tiny bits, again, I'm Natasha. And I'm Debbie. Well, nice to meet you. Hi, nice <laughs> to meet you. Glad you're here. We're really not this nerdy, I swear. <laughs> um, but no, we've been together for 20 years, married about... 10-ish. About half that time. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Almost, it'll be 20 years in this October. And uh, we live in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the USA, born and raised. Mm -hmm. And we love our country, but we also have been really enjoying learning about other countries. We've been doing our channel for a year and a half, um, yes. strictly has been on the United Kingdom. And now we are starting to learn about Australia. And it has been so far such a beautiful um, mm -hmm. start to our journey. And we really hope that you'll join us along on this road. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do today. So like Debbie said, we're going to dial us back. We're going to look at some uh, geography, some population, some mm -hmm. borders, some information we don't have. And I got to give you a little secret. Mm. Now, a secret to, to all, all the Aussies out there, all Americans, and I can say this because I happen to be American, mm -hmm. um, we have a little secret for you. We all secretly have a crush on you because we, we all secretly want to come live there too. We do. And vacation there. But, because it's but, so beautiful. And the problem is why? Why don't we do that? It's so far away. It's so we don't get to far visit far. nearly as much as we'd love to. Mm. Okay. So right before we start the video, we just want to tell you guys something very important about us too. <clears throat> So we do these videos not for views and things like that. We do these for what reason, Debs? We do these to learn. We want to get educated and learn more about the world in general. And we like to see um, not only the differences, but also how we're common. Yeah. How we can work together. I like how you said that because we've learned through learning about the United Kingdom. When we learn about the differences, it actually teaches us more about our similarities. Mm -hmm. And um, But that's what we're here for. We're here to learn and to actually get the information and learn about not just the country, but to get to learn you guys too. Um, and we hope that you'll join us over on our Facebook page. We do a lot of live videos and we can talk mm -hmm. to each other one-on-one. -on -one. So please come over to Facebook, join us there. And also, I know this guy's American. I know he's going to mispronounce stuff. I heard him speak for a he second might. when we just turn on the video. So we'll we'll know. We'll know that I'll mis mispronounce some things. And um, we'll try to learn our pronunciations because we take that pretty seriously, too. All right, everybody, let's just all get it off of our chests. Koalas and kangaroos, boomerangs, did you reduce? Sydney, Melbourne, all... Uluru, <laughs> crocodiles, cockadoos, everything that will kill you. Shrimp on Barbies, that's not true. That Vegemite stuff that tastes like poo. Coral reefs and platypuses. Pla platypus <laughs> platypi. What's the plural? And you'll know the song. Platypus. All right, now let's actually learn about the freaking country. Deal. Let's do that. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Today's gonna be Australia. You know the drill, let's dissect the flag. Ooh. And I love the flag, other than the Union flags in it. The Australian flag has a blue field with a Union Jack on the upper mm -hmm. hoist corner to represent that it was a former colony and a current Commonwealth of the United Kingdom, with a large star under it representing the Commonwealth, and the five stars on the right, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Crucis, to the right representing the Southern Cross constellation. Okay. I didn't know. All right, that was fun. Now let's discuss about the borders. Now, obviously, as an island nation, or rather large one, yeah. but still an island, Australia doesn't have any borders with any other nations, but that doesn't mean that Australia doesn't have some rather intriguing parameters. The country divides itself up in a rather intriguing way. Like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a difference. So that was the thing that like shocked the heck out of us when we did um that first uh -huh. video. That's not the first one, but the first one on looking at Australia. <laughs> yeah. People were like, in the comments, you guys helped us with this. Yes, you did. You were like, hey, why don't you look at Western Australia? It's my favorite state. And I'm like, 
What? So state? they say state. <laughs> we had no idea. We did not know that at all. And that's cool because that helps us to understand things a lot easier. It does. We can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> we can. But it's only shocked me. Did not know that. So see a similarity. <laughs> Didn't know that at all. Their intriguing way, like the US, Australia has states, not provinces. There is a difference. Six of them, and each one kind of has their own little flair and quirks, like Tasmania, known for being crazy. <laughs> Where things get a little interesting, though, are the territories. Australia has three domestic internal territories and six overseas okay, territories. Okay, that is confusing. Technically seven if you include the Australian Antarctic Territory, even though the Antarctic Treaty kind of bans anybody from claiming Antarctic soil as their own, which we will find out in future episodes that a lot of countries do a wonderful job at ignoring. The three internal territories are Northern Territory, Capital Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it. Canberra. I think I learned when I looked back at the map uh -huh. and I was going through looking at certain places and I think I learned that pronunciation. And I know for a fact he got that wrong. Okay. I, I don't think I'm going to get it right though. Let's hear your try. Canberra. That might be right. You don't know. Any more than I, I don't do. Know, I don't know. Right. I don't know that that's I right. I it might be. Canberra. Camera? <laughs> I tried, but I know that's wrong. I was going through okay. and looking at a couple things, trying to, because I take the pronunciations very seriously. Our UK family can tell you this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I try so hard. We definitely try to learn. But I, I, I just know he was wrong. I don't know that I was right. Let me know in the comments if I really need to go and learn more. We'll do some future videos too if you want us to on pronunciations, learn mm -hmm. them and stuff, because we like to learn those. We like to sound educated and not mm -hmm. the exact opposite of what I may have just done. <laughs> Northern Territory. So this is a little bit complicated here. I need to hear this. It is. Northern Territory, Capital Territory, which is basically just the capital city of Canberra and some extra space around it, and the confusing little tyke Jervis Bay Territory. Jervis Bay was bought and developed to give the inland capital Canberra access to the sea, and eventually Jervis Bay split from the capital. However, it's still counted as part of the capital in elections. It's a little confusing, <laughs> even though it really doesn't have much going for it, except for a small Navy base and beaches that it kind of took from other neighboring towns. The most dramatic border area, though, would have to be the middle of Australia. For years, this slab of land mm -hmm. didn't exactly quite know how to distinguish itself and has gone through four transitions wow. in the past century. Awesome. First, it was all South Australia, which didn't quite make sense because mm -hmm. parts of it touched yeah. the northern parts of Australia. So it split into two, one state and one territory. Then for four makes years, sense. it became South Australia and two territories, the new one being called Central Australian okay. Territory. Then finally, it changed its mind and went back to being Northern Territory. Central Australia is kind of like your girlfriend at a restaurant. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple! Yeah. Finally, we've That's reached me. the overseas territories. Although Australia has over 8,000 islands under its what? sovereignty, six of these islands- I had no idea there were that many islands to it. I didn't know there were many islands on any, anywhere near there. No. Okay, and six overseas territories. Interesting. Hmm. Islands operate as distinct territories, some of which sustain themselves with permanent populations. They are Ashmore and Cartier, Cartier. the Cocos or Keelings Islands, Coral Sea Islands, the Heard and McDonald <laughs> Islands, and the popular holiday spot, the Norfolk Island, and the pleasant Christmas Island that yeah. gets attacked by huge coconut crabs every year. Yeah. Finally, Australia is home to arguably the most micronations in the world. Really? Places like the Principality of Y, Rainbow Creek, the Empire of Atlantium, and more. These nations were developed by either small groups of people or a single person because they were doing things like protesting taxes and wanted to claim autonomy, or they were just kind of bored and decided to amuse themselves. But still, hey, they tried. All right, now let's talk about the landscape, shall yes. we? Yes. Okay, not all of Australia is a desert, okay? Only about 35%. Okay, so besides Antarctica, Australia is the driest continent on the planet, which that. explains why, yes, 85% of the population lives along the edges of the country within 50 kilometers of the wow. coast. Mm. Nonetheless, a lot of places, specifically around the coasts, actually have very temperate and even tropical landscapes. By the north, you find tropical zones and wetlands and mm. rainforests. By the far edges on the east and west, you can find subtropical Heck zones yeah. with lighter forests and plains. A little bit inland, Close to the interior, you find grasslands and flat stretches of semi-arid terrain. In the southeast by Sydney, you find temperate, cooler, arid land with semi-tropical yet slightly dry areas with an abundance of trees and plants. Okay. Then of course you have Tasmania, which is on a completely different level of green. Then we reach the deep interior where we hit the great deserts like the Great Victoria and Great Sandy Deserts. This area is famously known as the I was Outback. just gonna ask. The Outback. Now that's the area that I'm used to seeing and thinking of when yeah. I think of Australia. Right. That's what um, they typically show us in movies right. and stuff like that. I'm sure you all know that. And, yeah, besides um, Sydney. I mean, we see some in Sydney that's... We see the opera house in the background. That's yeah. about it. Um, but 
I'm going to try another pronunciation. Melbourne? That's I'm nice. so scared. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm so scared to mess it up. And I apologize if I do. I really don't want to make, make it wrong. Um, but yeah, we, we you're absolutely right about that. Like the shows and movies we watched, and we have watched a couple, mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, Australian shows we really liked a lot. They always show the Outback. They do. And they don't show anything that he just did and the couple things we've already seen when we looked mm-hmm. at the Coral Coast Drive in Western Australia. Right. Why are they not showing that? I don't I think it's a hidden gem. I was just going to... They gonna, do want to keep it to themselves was, and they don't want the world to know. You just read my mind. That here it is. That was a creepy mind reading crap I that know. you do. I was just going to say that you guys are totally doing that intentionally. But we're learning your secrets. We're going to figure this out <laughs> and then we're going to just... Yeah. Mm-hmm. We got you. We're on to you, Australia. <laughs> that was good is essentially the area of Australia with long open stretches of red and orange desert that lays out beyond the horizon with few sparse populations of people that can be found anywhere. It has a dry, rocky, rugged terrain that everybody assumes is teeming with a variety of poisonous insects and reptiles mm-hmm. and, well, Isn't I mean, it? it kind of is, but still, <laughs> there's more to it than just that. Oh, and don't forget Lake Hillier, that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason. What? A naturally pink lake. I've never heard of that in my I, life. Uh, Why? Uh, huh? Yeah. Tell me more. A pink lake. That's cool. And where is that's in the outback? Where are we men? I feel like maybe oh. more people know about this than Are we embarrassing ourselves? We might be. I don't care. I'm being honest. I don't know this. I've never what it's a pink lake. Yeah. The water can't be pink, so what's under there? Does fish live in there? <laughs> There's too many questions. We did a whole video on this. <laughs> I know. I'm like, uh is it salty? They're probably, like, they're probably like laughing at us like, really, it's a pink lake. And they know everything about it. And we're over here or going, he's, Or he's messing with us and we look really stupid. Oh, let's hope not. I'll edit this out if that's the case. <laughs> I got us. Um, okay. We're going to need more information on that or find mm-hmm. a video on that. Really? Yes. <laughs> Just that. Oh, and don't forget Lake Hillier, that strange lake that is mysteriously naturally pink for some strange reason that baffles scientists. Now, if there's one thing that really they epitomizes Australia, mm-hmm. it would have to be its world-renowned beaches and coasts. People flock from all over the world just to enjoy yeah. the beautiful, pristine atmosphere of a real, authentic Australian beach. Just remember to put on your sunscreen, though. Australians actually kind of have a joke where they can tell who the ignorant tourists are. It's usually <laughs> the ones who think they'll be totally fine sitting out in the sun for more than 20 minutes. Skin cancer rates are actually exceptionally high in Australia. And the population has acknowledged the precautions that they need to take. Now we all know that Australia. Sorry to keep pausing, but isn't that because of the, the there's a ho- <laughs> hole in the ozone in that area, right? Because I know from New Zealand we have friends yeah. in, in New Zealand, um, and you're just, just so much further south. At least that's what we've heard. Yeah. So, so let us know if that's correct. I, I mean, I burn here in Cincinnati, Ohio, mm-hmm. in like 80 degree Fahrenheit, 70, 70 degree Fahrenheit mm-hmm. weather, which is somewhere around the 20 Celsius, um, in 15 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I'm too pale. You get brown. That's that Italian I ancestry. Do. We aren't the same in that regard. But um, yeah, I would have a hard time there for that reason. And I would have to probably keep myself covered more than likely. Because oh, I would really be in some trouble there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> high in Australia and the population has acknowledged the precautions that they need to take. Now we all know that Australia is home to some of the most unique and curiously distinct animal species in the world not found anywhere else. However, Australia is also known as the home of many feral species. Australia Mm. has over 50 invasive species that were brought over to the land from areas mostly in Europe and over the course of nearly one and a half centuries have bred and spread like wildfire all over the country. Animals like the European rabbit, red fox, water buffaloes, goats, pigs, even camels, and worst of all, the famous cane toad. They've all gone wild and have cost the Australian government billions of dollars in environmental damages and maintenance. Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't really know how to transition into the demographics from this part, so here's demographics. Today, Australia has a population of about 23 million people. Now, to many outsiders, Australia is kind of known as the place where the British sent their prisoners. First of all, that's rude. Second of all, that's only like kind of half. Didn't know that. Yes, during the early years of Australia's colonization from the UK, droves of convicts were sent to penal colonies in Botany Bay, which is now in present day Sydney. Really? 165,000 convicts, about 25,000 of which were women, (laughs) were sent over the course of 80 years. Although the British weren't the first ones to discover Australia, it was actually the Dutch. As they 
came, they named the land New Holland and the adjacent island next door, New Zealand, after the province of Zeeland in the Netherlands. Oh. However, as we'll soon discover, the Dutch were really good at discovering places, but kind of not so good at colonizing and maintaining those places for themselves. However, most of Australia's population came from natural colonization from British non-convict nationals. Some would argue that Australia was kind of like the UK's version of Operation Backup Plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American Revolution, <laughs> <laughs> Look at the screen. Well, that just happened. <laughs> that's hilarious, and that's I don't funny. know that I buy that, but that's that's hilarious. Yeah, that's that's interesting to learn all that. That's just, <laughs> I didn't know about the prisoners. No, um, I mean I feel like they kind of did them a favor in a way. Like, hey, you want to go to Australia? Yeah, I'll go to all Australia. Right. <laughs> sure, <laughs> give me some. Uh, I mean, I know they weren't sitting out on a beach, but right. This is fascinating. Um, it's a short video, and it doesn't, like you said earlier, it doesn't doesn't cover everything. But this is very interesting. It's a good start. It is a good start. Operation backup plan in case of America goes crazy. After the American Revolution, the UK tried to compensate for lost colonies by reestablishing new ones, and Australia was hot on the Got list. It. About 85% of the population is European. Asians make up the next largest minority of about 12%, okay. mostly coming from China and India and other Southeast Asian countries like Vietnam and the Philippines. Did not know that. By the way, yes, Australia does have black people, not many, but before the Federation began, Africans, mostly from sub Saharan countries like South Africa, Mauritius, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe and Sudan have historically resided in Australia. It wasn't until the 60s when African assistance programs allowed many Africans to study and eventually move oh, to wow. Australia. And today, they make up about 1% oh, wow. of the population. One demographic of people that commonly gets overlooked though, would have to be the native Australians, commonly known as the Aborigines, yeah. which make up about 3% of the population. Aborigines are a very unique and distinct people group that come from hundreds of different tribes, each with their own language and dialect, oh, wow. spread throughout the North, South, and Central regions. Today, Aboriginal rights are a huge hot button topic in Australian legislation, and about 22% of the land of Northern Australia is Aboriginal owned. In 2013, Aboriginal groups actually banded together and decided to kind of make their own little state called the Murawari Republic, independent from Australia. The Australian huh. government though doesn't really recognize this okay. thing, just kind of brushes it off with a meh, as long as you don't cause a civil war attitude. Well, as you can see, a lot of people have come to live in Australia, but now let's see how Australia interacts with the rest of the world. Interesting. Australia is, let's just put it very simply, a very popular country. If this was high school, Australia would be on the top of the social ladder hand. Yeah, it's not Everybody untrue. knows something about Australia. When it comes to friends though, Australia not only goes for the cool kids, but also the strategic ones. Mm -hmm. Of course, Australia gets along with many of its Asian neighbor nations, specifically China and India, as large numbers of people from those nations live in Australia, and they do great business with them as I well. Didn't know that. Australia gets along pretty well with the islands of Oceania, except Fiji. In 2006, Australia refused to. <laughs> Back up a military coup that. <laughs> Perfect timing to bring out the Fiji water there. <laughs> I wasn't drinking that. I hate Fiji water. It's the worst water. I don't drink this in like every day of my life. I was legit taking a. No, sort of thing. that was that was good timing there. That was hilariously not right. <laughs> Fiji has never been brought up in any video we've ever done ever no. in the history of life. I'm sorry. Now. Sorry about that. I hate Fiji water. It's horrible. <laughs> Let's just get back into the video. Except Fiji. In 2006, Australia refused to back up a military coup that overthrew the government in Fiji, and since then, Things have been a little weird between the two countries. In terms of their best friends, though, oh, yeah. of course, New Jeez. Zealand would have to rank in the top level, and they are basically like siblings mm -hmm. that share a very similar culture, language, and history we love New Zealand too. colonies. Whereas the UK also has a high priority on Australia's entourage, as they make up the largest demographic of people ethnically and as migrants in the country. But finally, we reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia. We do. Facts right there. <laughs> that is a fact. I've been saying this. You have. Been I love that he said it too. That is a fact. That picture right there. That's how we feel. Mm -hmm. Oh, kind of has a crush. We have a crush. We do. It's more of a. It's becoming a love. It is. At least for these two Americans. <laughs> Not just us. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so cute that he just said that though. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's see where that goes. We reach the USA. The USA and Australia kind of have a little crush on each other. Australia is always there to back up the US in times when allies are necessary, and the US, well, I mean, we Americans, 
we just love Australians. We love their accents. We love their culture. Mm -hmm. We love their accents. <laughs> we love their spunky Australian attitude. And we love their sexy, sexy accents. And their food. Almost any Australian that comes to the US is immediately loved and welcome. Even if they are slightly sociopathic, one sentence with that accent and we are smitten. We love you. Australia. We do love you, Australia. In conclusion, Australia is just, everybody loves Australia. True story. Um, I like what he said at the end. It's true. We love Australia. Um, I can't think of any country who doesn't mm -hmm. or any person I've ever met that's ever said anything negative about Australia. Um, no. And I have had a couple friends that have been to Australia mm -hmm. and man, they came back not wanting to come back. <laughs> it's like, do I have to go back? I'm surprised they even came back. No. My only big concern, like you said, is, um, the time to travel. Yeah. My back doesn't like sitting for long periods of time. And also again, Hail Scottish ancestry, <laughs> that European ancestry. Um, the douse you with sunscreen. You would have to do that every five minutes. I just think I'd have a really hard time. Um, so that does concern me. Um, I would be burned up. Well, quickly. Have to keep her indoors. <laughs> you might, but that would be the like the whole like the most like upsetting thing ever. You, I would never stay inside in Australia. I know you kind of have to get outside. Australia. I learned a lot in this video, but I know there's so much more to learn. Yeah, I wish you would have went a little bit more into the States. I know, yeah. I know we'll take a better look at that. Um, we could probably find a video on the States, maybe? In the Pink Lake. I need more information yes. on this. Let us know, guys, if you don't mind, please let us know where to go next. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we hope that you're, um, we hope that you might have a little crush on us too. Because I'm telling you, it's turning into way more than a crush at this point. Um, but let us know where to go. Where where should we go to learn more about um, Australia? And uh -huh. it's not just seeing things. We want to learn about, you know, everything we can. Yeah. Um, so help us to know where to go because we're coming from a place of, um, well, you see what we know now. You know, know what we know <laughs> in the videos we've done so far. But please let us know where to go next and what to look into because we don't know. Um, but I had a lot of fun with this and learning, and I hope that you guys did as well. I hope you did. I had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to get into more. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate you. We'll see you next time. Until then, please love like Jess. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.